Good evening, Roxana. Uh, we're, we're here again for our midweek Bible study. Um, as we're waiting for others to come on. Uh, good evening to you. I hope your week has been productive. I hope that things have gone your way. God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Uh, it's good to see you tonight as you're coming in. Uh, we're going to have a productive study tonight. We'll continue, as always, in our Kingdom Living series. Uh, looking forward to all that God is going to do and say tonight in this lesson to bless us. Uh, he's he's consistently moving rock sound forward. I'm excited. Uh, even in this pandemic, and I'll just share this today, I'm excited about the, the way we're headed and, and what God is doing uh, for us and, and through us uh, in our community. Uh, I just thank God for the opportunity to serve. Uh, so many of you are serve, service oriented uh, and that's a blessing unto the Lord. Um, as, as we go forward tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on some to get in so I won't have to repeat it again. Uh, but as we go forward tonight, we continue in our kingdom living uh, study. As usual, last week, uh, as, as we went forth, we were dealing with this whole thing, the problem of submission. And, and we finished that up. We finished that up last week. Um, there can be problems with submission when you confuse submission with obedience. Uh, we, we talked about that, that we're submissive to those in leadership above us, those that in government and where we work. Uh, we're submiss submissive uh, in our homes, but being obedient to God is a priority over submission. When leadership tends to want to lead you astray, uh, throughout the Bible, those who were faithful were always submissive unto God. Uh, tonight, I, I want to kind of introduce this, this new subject we're going to talk about in Kingdom Living. Uh, I, I want to introduce it tonight. Uh, I, I'm going to spend some time talking about Kingdom Authority in Jesus' name. Kingdom Authority in Jesus name we we won't get all of it tonight but we will get a good foundation to start with uh, once again thank God for you tonight those that are uh, joining in um, we have to understand and and I constantly remind you we have no authority of our own right the only authority that we do have is the authority given to us as children of God through Christ Jesus, this kingdom authority. Um, God has given us authority as ambassadors in the earth as we represent him. He's given us limited authority. Uh, but through Christ Jesus, we, we understand that our authority has power. Uh, tonight I want to talk about the kingdom authority in Jesus' name. The kingdom authority in Jesus name. I want you to understand that in, 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 in the Bible in Matthew 28 and 18, uh, I just want to declare tonight and quote it, but it says that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, here the writer Matthew declares that Jesus stated that all power was given unto him in heaven and in earth. The key to, to all kingdom authority is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Uh, Paul rightly declares and says that Jesus is, is, in lo is Lord over both the dead and the living. We're going to look at a passage of scripture tonight. Uh, if, if you have your Bibles, go ahead uh, and go to Romans 14, looking at 7 through 12. Romans 14, looking at 7 through 12. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, if you have your electronic instrument, however you decide to retrieve that scripture, if, if you can pull that up or go to it tonight, Romans 14, 7 through 12. I, I want to spend a little time there tonight 
um, as, as we go forward. Um, it's important to understand that Jesus has all authority, not some authority, all authority. And a lot of times that's where we mess up because as, as humanity, as believers of the faith and Christians, so often we want to give Jesus limited authority in our lives. We, we want to take control of some things in our lives, but what, what better person to relinquish your control to than Jesus Christ? Because he knows what you have need of. He knows what's good for you. He knows what's best for you. But yet so often, we, we don't want to relinquish total control to him. We want to give limited authority to him that there are some things in our life that we want to make the decisions on. And how, how many of you tonight know that when we make decisions, sometimes they are not the best decisions? Uh, tr the truth will set you free. And, and I made decisions and sometimes they were not my best decision. But the Lord has never failed me. He's never made a decision in my life that worked for my bad. It's always worked for my good. By now, you ought to be there. Uh, Romans chapter 14, uh, going over to verse number 7. Going over to verse number 7. Here it is, God's word for God's people. It says, for none of us lives to himself. And no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Did you get that? We are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12, So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore let us not judge one another any more, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or cause to fall in a brother's way. See, sometimes we want too much control in situations and circumstance. The scripture tonight there in Romans 14, there at verse 7 through 12, we went down and read and, and you've heard it. Uh, no man is an island, just to paraphrase. No man is an island to himself. Uh, if you go back a few verses before verse 7, it talks about what a man eats. Uh, we don't produce everything that we devour or conceive or eat. It comes through the collaborative effort of others that we work alongside of. When, when you go to the marketplace, just as an illustration, when you go to the marketplace, you go to the grocery store and you purchase your groceries, you didn't produce those things in the store, but yet they are there for your consumption. So it takes a collaborative effort. No man is an island. He's, he's not an island to himself. You are not self-contained. There, there are times when we need others in our lives. And as believers, if we look at the pattern that was put in place in the book of Acts of the first chick, uh, church, they had everything in common. They worked together. They prayed together. They served the Lord together. That, that unity, that bond that Christianity forms through the word of God brings believers together. A great example here on this virtual platform, even though you may not be a member of Rock Santa, you've decided that it was important enough that you've given your Wednesday evening to come in and unify with us as a believer and to get a word from the Lord. And so we are not islands. We need each other. And, and to understand the kingdom authority in Jesus' name, the kingdom authority in Jesus' name, 
Jesus' name has kingdom authority. All power was given to him of heaven and earth. The scripture declared that, that he was given all power over the living and the dead. And at the end of it all, every man will go before him and every knee shall bow and we'll all have to give an account of our lives. So there's kingdom authority given to Jesus, but it's all authority. We have, as believers, we only have limited authority. God trusted us, but he only trusted us with a portion of authority. Let's go a little farther. When we think about Lord, that word Lord was used in the scripture. It, to think of Jesus Christ as Lord, that means to be over. Lordship puts you in a place of authority over all other individuals. Here it is. A Lord is one with absolute power and absolute authority. See, here it is. We, we, we speak of commitment. We talk about commitment, but the real, the, the real power is in authority, in our surrender. And the issue is we are not willing to surrender. If you are not willing to totally surrender, then you really can't walk in that kingdom authority. Commitment is one thing, but commitment you control. Did you get that? When you talk about commitment, commitment is something we have authority over. But when we surrender, we relinquish all authority to Jesus Christ. So when you say I surrender all, I hope you're being honest about it, not only to yourself, but before God, that if you are truly surrendering yourself unto God in, in the kingdom authority of Jesus Christ, it means that you are no longer in control of your own life. You've surrendered yourself to an authority above your authority. You have given Christ authority over your whole life. To, to allow him to be in total authority of your life means that he can dictate your circumstances and situations. It means that he has the authority to allow you to go into something to, to, to produce or to come out in a different manner to serve the kingdom of God. Some things that we're subject to are not because of our authority, but of Christ's authority. Affliction, a sickness can happen in your life, but Christ allowed it because of his authority to produce a certain end. Maybe not even in you, but maybe in somebody else. Maybe he allowed you to go through something so that you could actually later minister to somebody else through your testimony about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So we can't wear blinders when we start to look at God's ability through Christ to affect our lives. The word that still stands out is the word surrender. We've got to move to that place where we accept that word as a part of our Christian walk. Commitment is great, but we are still in control when we deal with commitment. But when we surrender, we actually allow Jesus to become Lord. We give him total control. We give him lordship over our lives. Here it is. To understand that truth is the beginning, beginning of kingdom authority. You have to understand that truth to understand that in God's kingdom, total authority is given to Christ. But if we are to operate and work within the kingdom of God, we have to be willing to surrender all authority. We have to be willing to surrender all authority unto the Lord. That's something to ponder as, as we continue in the lesson. First, we have to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know some folk have a hard time with folk telling them what to do, but we're not talking about other folk. 
we are talking about the Lord. I'll take it a step further. There are some people in the body of Christ that really don't want the Lord to tell them what to do. They've embraced the salvation. They've embraced him as a savior, but they really haven't embraced him as Lord because his Lordship says he has total control and total power in your life over you. But so often we want to hold on to some things that the Lord is trying to separate us from or bring us out of because we are comfortable in the position in our life that we're in. So we neglect the Lordship because you think you have a better idea of what's best for you than what God has for you. Did you get that tonight? I hope you really understand and you'll let that sink in. Even though it's your life, the Lord knows better what's best for you than you do. And a lot of times we have not maximized our potential in our walk with the Lord, our potential in Christian living. We haven't elevated to the place where we should be. It's because we haven't given the Lord total control and access to all areas of our life. There are some areas we want to keep control over for ourselves. There are some areas that we don't want anybody to touch, especially the Lord. I, I got this and you want him to be savior, but you don't want him to be Lord of your life. Oh, we work out our plans. We work out our five-year plan. We'll work out a 10-year plan. We'll work out a plan for our future. But if you're working your plan out for your life and it doesn't include the Lord of your life through Jesus Christ, then really you haven't worked out a plan because you can't see the future. You don't understand what tomorrow will bring forth in your life that you may have to deal with. But there's nothing that can come into your life that Jesus Christ is not already aware of. Somebody may need to hear that tonight. You're not going through anything. You're not going to experience anything that the Lord won't have knowledge of. What, what better way to go through life knowing that what you are experiencing and what you're going through, the Lord has already uh, has knowledge of it or is aware of it. And, and he can deal with that situation. See, uh, and, and I had the conversation today that a, a, a lot of times when we make out our list of, of the things that the Lord has done, our lists are shallow because we can only do the tangible things on the list. Here's the praise part. If, if the Lord ever showed you the list of the things that he didn't allow to come into your life because he's had lordship, if he ever showed you the list of the things that he held off out of your life because he has the lordship over your life, your list of things held off or the things denied in your life would be longer than the list of the blessings that you see tangible. The intangible is worth more than the tangible. I, I thank him for what I do have, but I thank him a whole lot more for the stuff that I didn't get and the stuff that I didn't come in contact with or some folk I didn't come in contact with or the experiences that I didn't have to have in my life because he held his hand and he held and made it stay. I wish you could get that tonight. So his lordship gives him total governance or control in our life. Here it is, to experience that kind of authority we have to accept the truth of kingdom authority. We have to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing that we have to do, we have to lay down the weapons of our warfare. We have to put our swords down sometime. See, sometimes we are ready to fight when the Lord says stand still. Sometimes we are ready to be the aggressor when, Lord, when the Lord is telling you to be passive. You didn't get it. We, we're taking battles into our own hands that in our hands we can't win. But when we understand his lordship and the Lord and we embrace him, then we can lay down the weapons of our warfare. There are some things you don't even have to speak to in life. There are some things 
that you need not even worry about or address. I've lived long enough now, been in a, and throughout my career, I knew that I couldn't satisfy everybody. But if I could satisfy the Lord, then everybody else would be all right. Because see, if you're ever in a leadership role, you're going to have to make decisions and you're not going to be able to please everybody. But you will be able to make a, see, a decision that's good for the whole body. So in doing that, you tend to understand the importance of letting him be Lord in your life. Too often, we take up the weapons of our warfare and we want to convince folk who we are, what we've done, that we are right about some things. And it doesn't really hold any water and it really doesn't matter whether you're right or you're wrong. Because at the end of the day, the Lord has the final say so anyway. Some of the scars and marks that we've received in life, we wouldn't have to get if we would just put down the weapons of our warfare. Some of the broken heartedness we've had to deal with in our life. Somebody ought to agree with that. Some of the things that we've gone through, we wouldn't have had to face if we allowed the Lord to have his way. So we got to lay down our weapons. Then we have to, uh, beyond laying down our weapons of warfare, we have to get to a place beyond embracing him where we're willing to put away our own agendas. Hey Amen. It got mighty quiet then. We got to be willing to put away our own agenda. The only agenda that matters to the body of Christ and to the believer is the kingdom of gender. It's God's agenda. That's where we win. Oh God, I, I, I wish we could get that tonight. All this stuff we'll spend time fussing and arguing over in the body of Christ doesn't hold water before God. But if we took on his agenda to save the lost, that's his agenda. To take care of the widows and the orphans, that's his agenda. See, if we took on his agenda to see about the less fortunate, the have and the have nots, we wouldn't have time if we had a kingdom agenda. We wouldn't have time for all the pettiness. Amen. That's a good word today. Our young folk talk about being petty. Amen. We wouldn't have time to be petty if we took on a kingdom agenda because we would always be busy working for the kingdom of God, doing those things that God has called us to do as servants. Yeah, that's it. As servants, we would be doing the things that he has called us to do. Here it is. We have to put away our agendas. We have to be willing to let go and let God. Jesus is Lord of all. We have to embrace that. We've got to embrace that tonight, that he is Lord of all. There's nothing in my life that the Lord can't touch. There's no one in my life that the Lord can't touch. There's nothing in my life that's off limits to the Lord. Oh, God. We're talking about surrender now, this total commitment. It is the kingdom authority in Jesus' name. The kingdom authority in Jesus' name. I surrender all. I've given it all up to him. For him I live and, and for him I'll die. It's, it's all about him. And when I make it his, it's better for me because my battles become his battles. Y'all got it. My fights become his fights. But anytime he's involved, I'm going to be victorious because I'm living according to kingdom authority. I've surrendered to that authority that's above me. There's authority in Jesus' name. Here we go. Let me give you some, some information here. In the New Testament, if it wasn't important for Jesus to be Lord or to have lordship over us as a believer, why is it mentioned that he is Lord more than 745 times in the New Testament? Why would God take the time to inspire the writers of the books of the New Testament to reference Jesus Christ as Lord 
over 745 times if it had no importance. And, and, and let me share this with you. You can't make him Lord. You can't make him Lord in your life. You invite him in to be Lord over your life. You surrender to him. But the title of Lord was already his. Did you get that? You can't make him Lord. God did that when he made him Lord over the living and the dead. But you can invite him in and you can surrender unto him and allow him to be Lord in your life. He already wears the title, whether you accept it or not. The danger in it is, is when you don't accept his title as Lord and you decide, I'm going to live life on my own terms. I wonder if I got just one or two people other than me who've tried some things on your own terms. I'm not going to ask you about your outcomes, but have you ever tried anything your way and your way really didn't work for you? But when the Lord got involved and you said, Lord, I take my hands off of it. I give it to you. I'm not worrying about it anymore. And all of a sudden, things started to come together and you can't even explain how they came together. You don't even know how they got accomplished. People started lining up. Situations and circumstances in your life started lining up because you took your hands off of it and surrendered it unto the Lord and let him deal with it. Think about the times that we've wasted time when we tried to work out and figure things out in our lives for ourselves and we didn't allow the Lord to have his way. How many times have we worked at something but we took the Lord out of the picture and we found ourselves wasting time? I wonder if anybody other than me has wasted time. I wonder if you're, you're, you're realizing now in your life I could be farther down the road. I could be doing better than I am. I could be in a better position or posture if I just had listened to the Lord. See, you've got to understand, even in, in, in our desire to be intelligent and, and to be educated, all that's great to pursue education, to pursue intelligence, to, to pursue position and, 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 and places of authority in, 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 in our jobs. That's all great to do the training. But if you never invoke the Lord, you can have all of that stuff and nothing ever happens for you. Oh God, I, do I have to make it plain? There are folk here today in this world who spent thousands upon thousands of dollars and they never asked the Lord, what is the Lord you'll have? me to do. And they thought they were carving out career choices and, and life patterns. And those things never came to fruition because they left out the X factor. They left out the Christ factor. And, and all of that work, all of the stuff that they've done, it, it came to naught. It didn't never come to the, to, the, to the maximization that they thought it should be because they never looked toward heaven and asked the Lord how he felt about it. That's, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand, that him being Lord, giving him lordship in your life, the Lord, as long as you surrender, he will not only be a protector, he will be a provider. His providence will show up for you. See, the Lord can create an arena for you. Y'all didn't get that. Maybe this is next level. This is next level understanding of your Christian walk. The Lord can create a level, a next level experience for you. He can create an arena for you, designed for you, and put you in it and let you flourish because you've been faithful unto the Lord. He can pull pieces together. Surely the creator of heaven and earth can organize a few things to bless his children as he see fit. That's the benefit. I don't worry about the blessing. I'm just waiting to receive it because I just believe God is orchestrating heaven and earth. And through his orchestration and the lordship of Jesus Christ, he's going to supply all of my needs because he said he would. He said he'll give you the desires 
of your heart. He says you have to ask though. But in your asking, you have to have the proper posture. He's got to be head of your life. He's got to be first in your life. He can't be your lifeline for only when things go bad. When you're going through that moment and now you're broke down, tore up from the floor. Now you want him to throw you a life preserver and, and bring you out of that situation. And he had nothing to do with it. He's not obligated to respond. He's not obligated to lift the burden. He's a burden bearer. But if only time we ever call on his name, and I said it Sunday, your, your relationship is not intimate with the Lord if the only time he sees you is when, he's in, when you are in trouble. Is that really a relationship? Well, I, I, I don't want to ask you because somebody may be in a relationship where the only time they see the person they're in a relationship with is when they're in trouble, when they want something from you. Think about it. That intimacy of a relationship is developed on spending time, through spending time with the individual. To be intimate with God, you've got to spend time with him. To be intimate with the Lord, you've got to spend time in his holy presence outside of Sunday morning. He's got to be effectual in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. The kingdom authority in Jesus' name. It's a reason why we have to preface things in Jesus' name. Because we don't have total authority. Our authority is limited, but we have the ability to operate in Jesus' name. The enemy doesn't care about us, but he really knows who Jesus is. He's not, he's not going to shake and quiver because I said, get back behind me, Satan. But if I tag it in Jesus' name, that kingdom authority now, he understands who Jesus is. So he will take flight. He will flee. But it's not because of me. It's because of the one I called on. It's in Jesus' name. Here it is as, as, as we come down to the quick. And there in verse uh, Romans 14, and there in verse 9, it says that he died and he rose, that he might be Lord of the living and the dead. That supreme authority. That's what he has, the kingdom authority, God-given authority over life and death. Then if, 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 you, if you looked in Acts, the second chapter, about verse number 36, it says, God have made that, that same Jesus whom ye love, who, crucif who you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He didn't do it. You didn't do it. God did it. Let me make it clear. God have made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. You didn't do that. God did that. So here it is. Man will either accept him or not accept him. But there in the books of Acts, it didn't matter because man crucified him. But yet God loved him enough that he raised him from the dead. He became Lord and Christ. You didn't do that. God did it. I need him not only to be Jesus, but I need him to be Christ. I need to be, I need the divine nature of Christ in my life. I need him to be my Lord and Savior. I need him to be that leaning post. I, I need him to be my burden bearer. I need him to be the way maker in my life. I need him to be there, a constant help in times like these. I need him to always be present in my life because he's Lord. He's Lord of my life. Then as, as, as we bring this lesson to a close tonight, here's the question that you have to answer in your own life. Will you recognize his Lordship? Will you recognize his lordship? I know he's Lord, but are you willing to recognize his lordship? Are you willing to totally surrender all control and authority over to him in your life? 
Here we are, believers. Here we are, believers. Here, here we are, kingdom seekers. To get to the place where we want to go in our relationship with the Lord, we got to totally surrender. The second thing is, will you submit to his lordship? Yeah. Not only recognize it, it's one thing to see it and acknowledge it, but then are you going to submit to it once you recognize that he is in total control? Are you going to submit to it? Are you going to let the Lord have his way in your life? That's a big question because if he changes your season, you may be up today, but he may let you go through a drought. Are you going to still submit to him? Are you still going to surrender to him, to his lordship? See, the Bible tells us all things work to the good of them who love the Lord. So even in, my, in a messed up situation, if I surrendered unto the Lord, I know something good is going to come out of it. When doors are closed in my face, it's okay because I'm surrendering and submitting to somebody who opens new doors. When chapters are closed, I'm surrendering and submitting to somebody who can write new chapters, open new chapters in my life. I'm not stuck in a, in a perilous situation. He says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. If he can get me out of the mess I'm in, he's going to take me to a better place, a better station in life. See, that, that's the piece, to submit to him. Are you, it's one thing to recognize his lordship, but it's another thing to be willing to submit to it. Then if we go a little farther, will you allow him to be lord of all you have and all you do? Are you going to allow him to be lord of all you have and all you do? That includes your words and your thoughts. That includes your words and your thoughts. All you have and all you do, are you going to let him be Lord over all of that? Over your words and your thoughts. Are you going to let him be Lord over your time and your testimony? That's a powerful piece. Are you going to let him be Lord over your time and your testimony. Yeah, but in order to have a testimony, guess what? You got to go through the test. So if he's Lord, are you going to allow him to put you to the test? Are you going to be like Job and willing to go through whatever the Lord allows so that when you come out of it, you can have a testimony? But there's no testimony without a test. You're going to go through some things that God might get the glory. Are you willing to submit and surrender to his lordship that he might be glorified? Not for your personal gain. Your blessing is going to come for your obedience and your willingness to surrender. But are you going to be willing to submit, to let him have all that you have? Let him have control all, over all that you do over your words and your thoughts, your time and your testimony? Are you willing to live by that Lordship? Are you going to be willing to live by that Lordship? That's the challenge tonight as we start to look at the kingdom authority in Jesus' name. The kingdom authority in Jesus' name. We've laid a great foundation for the weeks to come and we're going to dive even deeper into this because right here on the surface, it seems simple, but human nature is something else. Humanity is constantly struggling with good and evil, right and wrong. We're constantly struggling in our relationship with the Lord. But choose this day who you'll serve. Because no man can serve two masters. So here we are. The kingdom authority in Jesus name. We have to reside to allow him to be Lord of our life. We all needed a savior. Now that we are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Now are we going to let him take his rightful place as Lord of our lives? That he can reach in and touch whatever he desires for whatever outcome that he wants to see. That's the challenge for us as believers. That's the challenge for us as we walk in kingdom authority, as we continue to, to study kingdom living. I'm glad I have the Lord in my life tonight as we get ready to close this lesson out. I thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank him for his saving grace, but more than that, I thank him for the mercy that he's shown in my life. I recognize today that I wouldn't be before you if it had not been for the Lord in my life. We've all had moments and circumstances that could have been our end, but he's been gracious. He's been merciful in our, all of our lives. So once we understand that, the, the ability to surrender and submit should not be a problem. But we got to put some stuff to sleep. We got to take our hands off some stuff in our lives. We got to let the Lord do his work. And, and can I share this tonight? Because somebody needs to hear this. Well, the Lord wants to take you and your walk with him, everybody can't go. Your next level experience with the Lord may be for limited seats only. Limited occupancy only. Maybe you're trying to take some folk on this journey that wasn't built for the journey. You got to recognize as the Lord is moving you forward in life, he's moving some folk out of your life. And that's okay. That's okay because you'll be better for it. And, and I don't mind. Lord, have thine way. If it's necessary that some folks get off the flight so my plane can fly, then Lord, let them hit the ramp. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. You struggling, wondering why people won't accept you for who you are and who you're becoming because they're not going to be around to see it anyway. Trust God. I promise you. Trust the Lord in your life. He makes no mistakes. You're on your way. You're on your way to a next level experience with the Lord. But I promise you, it's not predicated on folk around you. It's predicated on your relationship with the Lord. So start to develop that intimate relationship. Let him be the Lord of your life. Because there's kingdom authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It, it's been a great study tonight. We, we've laid a foundation for lessons to come in the next few weeks. Uh, I, I thank God for the opportunity. Uh, as, as we prepare to go tonight, I want to have a word of prayer with you. I, I, I just want to bless your life tonight. I know we finished a little early, but I don't even want to start something that I can't finish. So we'll just have the foundation tonight. Um, God is an awesome God. So as, as we prepare to go, let, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to gather in this virtual arena. Lord God, I thank you for the Big Rock Sound of Church family. I thank you for those who are partnering with us who came in to, for Bible study tonight. Lord, help us to, to get a better revelation of your kingdom authority in Jesus' name as we continue this study. Lord God, Lord God, help us to realize the strength that's in surrendering. Father God, when we commit, we are still in control. But when we decide to surrender, we relinquish all control unto you. Lord God, help your children to get a real understanding of the power that they inherit because of your authority given to Jesus Christ. Have your way. Now bless every family. Bless their loved ones. Lord God, whatever they put their hands to, whatever they put their hands to right now, bless it in the name of Jesus. Let it be profitable for them and their families, for those that they interact with. Continue to bless our sick and shut in to watch over those who are dealing with moments of bereavement. Lord God, continue to lower the stress level of those dealing with this, this coronavirus. Lord God, speak into their situation. Then, Father God, help us to be more like Jesus Christ. Help us to be better in our efforts, Lord God, to serve humanity. Lord God, give us a serving spirit that we might be great representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. 
We thank you tonight, most of all, for your mercy and grace. We lift you up and we magnify you, for there is none above you. You are God all by yourself. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. I thank you, Roxana, for, for being here tonight. I thank you for taking time out of your busy day to bring the day almost to a close with a great study tonight. I'm looking forward to continuing this study in the kingdom authority in Jesus' name as, as we dive deeper into this thing. I believe there's a blessing in it. And, and hopefully the rest of your week will be a blessed week as you go forward. Hopefully those things that you put your hands to, I know God will prosper it as long as you stay humble. Humility is the way. Have a blessed evening. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 1030 uh, for our Sunday morning worship uh, virtually on uh, here on Facebook Live. Uh, God has been doing an awesome work. Uh, even through virtual worship, he's been giving us a powerful word. And I just thank God for what he's doing for us. Roxanne, I love you. To all those that are partnering with us, I love you. Continue to serve the Lord. Uh, continue to keep your head up and be proud of the Lord that you serve. So I hope to see you soon. Uh, God's blessings upon you and may he continue to let his face shine upon you. God bless you. And may he keep you is my prayer. See you on Sunday.